Hello and welcome to today's video on uh, transporting plants. Uh, I'm, I've decided to do this um, earlier on rather than later because it's a bit of it's a bit of faff to be honest. Um, no one particularly loves learning about plants, I'm sure, but uh, if you do, good on you. Um, so we're just going to start with the two main methods of transport in plants and that is the xylem and the phloem. We learned very very briefly about these at GCSE but now we're going to have to learn a little bit more. So these are the key definitions for xylem and phloem and let's just concentrate on the xylem to start off with. So the xylem is uh, the plant transport tissue. Remember that xylem and phloem are both tissues. So if you get a question asking you what tissue, give us a tissue in plants, and you are confused, xylem and phloem are both tissues. Uh, and it carries water and soluble minerals from the root upwards to the rest of the plant. It consists of hollow columns of dead cells lined end to end and reinforced with lignin. So there's a few things that we need to learn to understand this whole kind of concept. The first thing is the xylem vessel, which is here. Oh, that's a box. I want a brush. The xylem vessel. Um, and it's the probably the most obvious feature of the xylem. They are um, long cells with thick walls that have been impregnated with lignin um, which makes them waterproof. As a result of the cells dying their end walls and contents decay so basically they started off like this uh, and then over time uh, their end walls decayed and so they are just now hollow tubes. Um, they uh, are basically strengthened by the lignin in their cell walls um, and so that's kind of like the stability of the plant if you, if you want to say that. You can kind of say it, w it stops the xylem vessels from actually like collapsing in the, on themselves um, so they can keep water flowing upwards. Uh, yeah, basically um, what you might find in the xylem vessels is that lignification might not be complete in some parts of the, uh, the walls so um, pits are formed. Here are some pits here. Um, and these allow water to leave one vessel and pass into another adjacent vessel or pass into the living parts of the plant. So basically it's like a little tap. Um, we kind of say that these are pits in the lignified wall. So yeah, next thing we need to know is the adaptations of the xylems to its functions. So number one, it is made from dead cells aligned end to end to form a continuous column. The tubes are narrow and so water column so the water column does not break easily and capillary action can be effective. Basically capillary action is kind of like a physics idea. If you like push a tube into water and then so like go up. Uh, that's basically capillary action. Um, and there are pits in the lignified walls which allow water to move sideways from one vessel to another. Uh, lignin deposited in the walls are in spirals um, which allows the xylem to stretch as part as the plant grows and enables the stem or branch to bend so um, lignin might be like in a nice swirly pattern to make sure that the xylem vessel doesn't snap. Um, the flow of water is not impeded because there are no end walls, there are no cell contents there is no nucleus or cytoplasm and the lignin thicken, thickening prevents the walls from collapsing. 
and that's the xylem for you. And if you just want to look at that diagram there, be my guest. And now we're going to move on to the phloem, which is the second uh, method of transporting plants. Also, let's look at this diagram for a moment, um, just as we move on to the phloem. Uh, if you were asked to uh, annotate this diagram, the xylem is on the inner side, the phloem is on the outer side, phloem I think far, far away, so it's on the outer side, xylem in the inner side, and the vascular cambium, or just the cambium, is the line in between. The cortex is just like this bit, yes, kind of just around, and the pith is in the centre. Okay, so now the phloem. The phloem is a plant transport tissue, again, that carries the products of photosynthesis, so we have sugars, and the most common sugar you probably will be familiar with is sucrose, uh, to the rest of the plant. It consists of sieve tube elements and companion cells. So let's try and explain that now. The sieve tube element are not really um, true cells as they don't contain that much cytoplasm and they don't have a nucleus. They're lined up end to end to form a tube in which the plant transports sugars, uh, again normally sucrose. Uh, the sucrose is dissolved in water to form sap. Unlike the xylem, um, this tube contains cross walls, which uh, we can see here. and. Here um, at uh, intervals, and these cross walls are perforated by many pores to allow the sap to flow. Hence, the cross walls are called sieve plates, and the tubes are called sieve tubes. The sieve tubes have very thin uh, walls and are usually five or six sided. So, there we go sieve tube element and the sieve plate, and this is what a sieve plate would look like if you looked at it from a bird's eye view. And then you need to know about these little companion cells here. So, in between the sieve tubes are small cells, um, each with a large nucleus and dense cytoplasm. So they have quite a big nucleus. Uh, these are companion cells and they have numerous mitochondria to produce the ATP needed for active processes. The companion cells uh, carry out the metabolic processes needed by the sieve tube elements. This includes using ATP as a source of energy to, lo to load sucrose into the sieve tubes. The cytoplasm of the companion cells and the sieve tube elements are linked through many plasmodesmata. So the, um, there would just be a thing here and that would be called a plasmodesmata. And these that these are gaps in the cell walls allowing communication and flow of minerals between the cells. And that's basically a brief introduction to the xylem and the phloem. Um, I'll talk to you again soon.